Hello everybody, I'm Chobongo, and today we're going to take a look at 10 early game goals that will set you up for success, whether you're a new member or a returning player making a new account. If you complete these goals, you'll be well on your way to the mid game, so in no particular order, let's get into it. When you're first starting a new account, one of the most difficult things to come by can be money. That's why I think that farming is one of the first skills that every account should level up. Farming is unique because it's one of the only activities in the game that allows you to do a little bit of work now and then come back later and get a reward. One of the crops you can grow with the farming skill is herbs, and with level 32 farming you can grow Renar weed. Herb runs are extremely profitable, and with the 4 base patches you'll have unlocked automatically, you can expect to make between 150,000 and 200,000 GP per farm run if you're growing Renar weeds. I do have an herb run guide on my channel, and I suggest that you check that out if you want to get more in depth into this process. Overall, herb runs are a great source of early game GP, and they can really set your account up for success if you're consistent about them. The next goal I want to talk about is the Ghost Ahoy quest, which will unlock you one of the most iconic RuneScape quest rewards, the Ectophile. So the Ectophile is a teleport item, and when you click to empty it, you'll pour it on the ground and get sucked in, and it'll teleport you here to the northeastern corner of Mauritania. Now if we look at the world map, we'll see that this gives us good access to the farming patch here, which has one of those herb patches I was talking about, as well as a fairy ring, if this is your closest teleport to one. And it gives you pretty close access to Canifis, where you can find the Slayer Master, which we'll talk about soon. So agility is a skill that nobody really wants to train. However, you can get one of the best outfits in the game by training this skill. So if you're doing the rooftop agility courses, you can get these things called Marks of Grace. And once you collect 260 of them, you can take them to the Rogue's Den in Berthorp and talk to Grace to trade them in for pieces of the Graceful outfit. The outfit is made up of six different pieces, a hood, top, legs, gloves, boots, and cape, and each piece reduces your player's weight by a certain amount, as well as increasing the rate at which you restore your run energy. This is super helpful for doing any sort of activity in the game where you're running around a lot, whether it's herb runs or questing, and the outfit plays hand in hand with the agility skill, because as you level up the skill, you'll also use your run energy more slowly. Getting the full graceful outfit will probably get you close to 70 agility as well, which is definitely nothing to sneeze at. However, this outfit is so good that it really is worth the time. The so Slayer is a classic old school runescape skill, and basically as you level it up, it'll allow you to kill new monsters based on your Slayer level. So all the monsters you see here in the Slayer Guide, you can't kill them without the corresponding Slayer level. And this skill will make you a ton of money in the long run, especially as you unlock some of these higher level monsters and bosses. Now there is one thing you can do right off the bat to get yourself an easy level 9 Slayer. So if you go ahead and head to Verok and you go to the East Bank, just here north of the East Bank where my cursor is at is the museum. If you go down the stairs here on the northern side of this ground floor of the museum, go ahead and walk down the stairs. And when you get to the bottom here, there's going to be someone named Orlando Smith. If you talk to him, he'll ask you to go around and help him fix these uh, placards on these displays here. And when you study them, you'll get prompted with questions the first times that you come through. And basically you have to go through to all four of these rooms around here and once you complete that you go back and talk to orlando smith and he'll reward you with enough experience to get level 9 slayer as well as level 9 hunter two big things i do recommend you do as soon as possible is both of the fairy tale quests that is fairy tale part one and fairy tale part two fairy tale part one will get you the magic secateurs which if you equip them while you're doing your herb runs you'll get a higher yield from your patches, which will just result in a bit more money. And then Fairy Tale Part 2, with partial completion of the quest, you unlock access to the Fairy Ring Teleportation Network. And with a Draman Staff equipped, you can just go ahead and configure this Fairy Ring, and you can teleport to over 40 different areas in the game. So if we just scroll through down here, and we just click a random one, DJR is the Chasm of Fire in Great Karend. And when we get there, as you can see, you've teleported to this fairy ring here, the Chasm of Fire is right there. And you can use these an unlimited number of times, they don't cost anything. So you can just continue to teleport to wherever you want. Now something that I do recommend you do as early as possible is all of the easy achievement diaries. I'll put the requirements up on the screen, but just a couple of the rewards that you can expect. 
So with the Varrock Easy Diaries, you can buy Battle Staffs from Zaf in the center of Varrock uh, for a discounted price, and then you can either high alk them or resell them on the Grand Exchange for a profit. With the Ardoin Easy, uh, Easy Diaries, you'll have the Ardoin Cloak 1, which will have this Cannon and Monastery Teleport. You teleport down here. This is a pretty good early game teleport. Puts you right here close to Tree Gnome Village, close-ish to Yanil, close to Ardoin if you don't have Plague City and the Ardoin teleport unlocked. And it also puts you right here close to a Fairy Ring, which you can uh, use this teleport and then run over to the Fairy Ring. And you can use that Fairy Ring network we talked about to get pretty much anywhere in the game. So the easy achievement diaries are definitely something that you should work on and really you should try to get the highest level achievement diary that you can at any given point. So something else that I do recommend that everybody does is to do as many quests as you can and just enjoy doing quests because it's one of the best ways to progress your account and the quests in this game are very good. Right here on the RuneScape wiki, there's the optimal quest guide. So this quest guide here on this page, they have a lot of good information. There's this whole section here for notable quest unlocks, which basically includes skill unlocks, transportation unlocks, equipment, areas, and prayers. Um, as well as if you just come down here, this is the most optimal order to do your quest in, and it also includes where you need to train skills, so if you really don't know what to do, this is a great place to start. So magic is one of the most powerful skills in the game, and I think you should level it up as early as you can. And at a minimum, you should shoot for level 55 to get the high level alchemy skill, which is a skill that allows you to turn items into gold, and sometimes when you're doing slayer, you can turn drops into gold instead of going back to bank them, and it just extends the length of your trips. You'll also unlock all kinds of useful teleports. The Ardoin teleport at level 51 also requires the completion of the Plague City quest uh, in order to use it, and the Watchtower teleport, which teleports you nearby to your nil, uh, requires the completion of the Watchtower quest in order to use. However, all of these teleports are extremely useful, and it just gives you an easy way to access many different places in the game. So the recipe for Disaster Quest is a staple quest in Old School RuneScape. It has extremely high requirements, so I don't expect this to be necessarily an early game goal, but it is something that you should start to think about, and you should start to work on it because the quest is actually made up of eight smaller sub-quests, so you can actually start this quest a lot sooner than you're able to finish it. The rewards for this quest are the ability to buy uh, different types of gloves all the way from bronze up to barrows, so there's bronze, iron, steel, black gloves, mithril gloves, adamant, um, rune gloves, dragon gloves, and barrows gloves. The barrows gloves here, these are some of the best gloves in the game, and they actually are the best in slot tribrid, tribrid gloves in the game if you aren't going to bring switches. So this is an extremely good reward, and they're untradeable, and for only 130,000 coins, they're absolutely insane. So this is definitely something that everybody should be working on. Alright, I know it sounds cliche, but the most important thing when you're playing RuneScape is to just enjoy the game. I think that it's safe to say that we all got into this game, partially at least, because you can just do whatever you want, whenever you want. And that's, like, really the best part of the game. There's so much content, there's so much great content, and whether you just want to chop trees, you want to go train some herblore, some fishing, whatever it is that you feel like doing, the most important thing is that you're having fun playing the game. Don't try to make it into, like, a job, don't do any of that weird stuff. Just play the game to play the game and enjoy it. Now with that being said, I hope you guys did enjoy this video today. If you did, please leave a like, consider leaving a comment, and maybe even subscribe so you won't miss any of my future uploads. Thank you all very much, have a wonderful day, see ya.